In 2016, Russian billionaire Yuri Milner contributed $100 million of his own money towards a project that would reach the stars. That project was Breakthrough Starshot. Hi everyone, Vega here. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at some things perhaps we don't know yet, what we haven't heard about, and the latest on Breakthrough Starshot. So, let's get to it. On the 20th of May 2010, the JAXA Icarus probe of the Japanese Space Agency in a mission to Venus proved the concept of a solar sail being able to propel a spacecraft. Indeed, it reached 890 miles per hour, which although fast for Earth-like terms is quite slow in terms of the exploration of the solar system. It seems the truth is that Icarus was far too heavy to reach higher speeds. At 2.2 kilograms, it would actually have to be 1,000 times lighter and no heavier than a few paper clips if it were really to reach 20% of light speed that Project Breakthrough Starshot requires. We know the concept uses lasers to propel such a craft, but unfortunately to do so means that the sail deployed would have to absorb just one of 100,000 protons or risk melting along the way. The problems don't end there. The dimensions of the sail would require materials that are just 0.003 inches or 7.5 micrometers thick. While it's possible, we have to remember that we also need a camera on board that would be as thin as a human hair as we can see depicted here. Current technology would allow us just 200 by 200 pixels, which may just be enough to resolve continents and oceans on targeted exoplanets, but the rewards would not really equal the efforts to send it in the first place. This is why much of Starshot's hopes are based on Moore's law. The idea that the number of transistors in a dense interrogated circuit doubles about every two years. If this were to continue, perhaps with quantum computing or advances in circuitry, we could maybe hope for 20 megapixels and give us something much more rewarding. Once we departed Earth, our convoy of tiny explorers would reach the planets in just hours to days. Now I'm not an expert in photography, but one thing that has not been discussed in enough detail for my own curiosity is how perhaps Breakthrough Starshot could also become Breakthrough Solar System Shot and give us access from close range to the worlds within our solar system. The nature of the quality of the pictures obtained would again, however, probably would not be enough to realistically compete with te top level telescopery. However, just a view of Uranus or Neptune that's not taken from Hubble would certainly be a superb achievement for humanity. In this table, we see the distance and how long it would take the years the spacecraft to travel at 20% light speed and also include for a signal to be returned to Earth. We can see that as things stand, Proxima Centauri is probably the likely destination, as it also has confirmed planets. We saw the other interesting destinations, including planetary systems around Rigel Centaurus and Ptolemy, also known of course as Alpha Centauri A and B. Barnard's star is also theorised to have a large plus size Jovian world, whereas Epsilon and Eridani would also be considered should a planetary system be found. But perhaps the most interesting of all might be Tau Ceti, the only other known star with a substantial planetary system in orbit around a G-type single star like our own Sun. The problem, of course, as we see here, is that it would take 70 years, approximately, for a signal to return from this distant world. However, it has always been assumed that Breakthrough Starshot would aim at Proxima Centauri as it is the closest, but that technique might not have a disadvantage. We assume that Breakthrough Starshot will be a flyby mission, that does not necessarily have to be the case. If we obtain a aim exponentially more powerful stars, perhaps Rigel Centaurus, Alpha Centauri A, or even better the largest star of a local area, Sirius. Indeed, René Heller from the Max Planck Institute calculated that Sirius itself, eight light years away, and twice as far as Alpha Centauri, was actually 16 times brighter, so its light would help the spacecraft both speed up and then decelerate. The maths is simple, said Heller, the time it takes to travel to the star system and then stay there is a function of the distance divided by the square root of the luminosity. So it would take less time to actually travel to Sirius compared to Alpha Centauri and almost exponentially quicker than to put a spaceship into orbit around Proxima. Imagine a convoy of miniature probes jetting off towards Proxima C, an ice world too far outside the warm habitable Proxima Centauri habitable zone. Maybe we could send several thousand, but just how many of these probes would actually reach the destination is beyond our currently known understanding. 
at such fast, fast speeds, gravitational manoeuvres would be virtually impossible. And so perhaps René Heller was right. Perhaps we do have to reconsider Breakthrough Starshot and take on board that we really need to be inserting these probes into an orbit around at first the star itself, and then perhaps harnessing the power to bend and twist the orbit sufficiently to view the planetary system at closer distances. Heller thought that it would take as much as 140 years to reach Proxima for an orbital insertion, but the huge local dark giant of Sirius is just 69 years by its calculations and the shortest of, by far of all the stars in our local area. Perhaps we might have to point our telescopes more at Sirius, the dog star, or maybe Procyon, another local giant, instead. Let's keep our fingers crossed that they have their own planetary systems as yet undiscovered or found if we'd like to see something viable from this project in our lifetimes. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. The channel recently hit 200 subscribers and I'm delighted with that, but we could always use some more. If you like small astronomy YouTube channels, don't forget to check out the What's Next channel which comes highly recommended. I'll include a link in the description. But also, if you're also a small channel and would like to get in touch, please also don't hesitate to contact me. Take care in these difficult times, and I'll see you on the next one.